Crespo and Dick Young. And our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Marty Denken. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us across the nation on Prime, it's time for our flyweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, and joining us from Yavaros, Sonora, Mexico. He weighed in at 112 and 3 quarter pounds. His record includes 24 wins, 10 losses, and 2 draws, with 8 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Marcos, Bang Bang Pacheco. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in our 10 round main event. Wearing yellow trunks with green trim and fighting out of our nation's capital of Washington, D.C. His weight, 112 and one half pounds. As a Penta flyweight champion, his record includes 25 wins, only one defeat, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the WBO number one contender, WBC number two contender. IBF number three, flyweight in the world, introducing Mark Too Sharp Johnson. Once again, here's our referee in charge, Marty Dinkin, now to give instructions. So you both know, from here on down. Abajo, okay, no. Toques de manos. Marty Denkin, the referee, tail of the tape. Johnson's 5'3", an inch taller than Pacheco. The uh, quarter of a pound separating him. He is three years younger and has three inches more in the reach department. And uh, from what we've seen of him, though we've not seen Pacheco, Mark Johnson has just too many skills. He is truly an accomplished fighter. And while Jimmy Lennon Jr. was handling the introduction so beautifully, and he listed off number one, number two, Number three, the WBA was certainly missed by, he wasn't even listed on the WBA list of things in the flyweight division. The man is the uncrowned king of the flyweights and is biding his time, not all that patiently, I might add, and that's understandable, waiting for a title shot. Well, there was a terrific champion, still is champion, Danny Romero in the, in the flyweights, who might have enjoyed uh, meeting up with Mark. I, I don't think Danny's a guy who would, who would uh, uh, duck a good challenge, but of course we saw what happened with him, and they're in the intrigue in a fight like this for Mark uh, Johnson, because Danny Romero last Friday was in a fight against the journeyman, much like a Pacheco, Tom, and found the eye around, uh, found the bone around his eye broken badly, and uh, there is a question whether he'll be able to continue his career. Certainly he'll have to lay off from uh, boxing for At a least long a year. time, probably, yeah. and I think that means that his title probably will end up being for grabs in the not too distant yep. future. If um, you uh, follow the Johnson camp, and we have, and we've watched him in some truly great battles, he's never disappointed. Why, uh, he would tell you that Romero didn't want to fight him. Uh, even when Romero had the title, Romero wanted no part of Johnson, but that, of course, is a commonplace uh, conversation among fighters. One guy's got the crown, the other guy wants it. Be that as it may, Johnson appears to be on the verge of finally getting a title shot either late this fall or early next winter and in that regard and we don't want to harp on it or belabor it he cannot afford to take a chance he has got to treat everybody who climbs in the ring against him as if the guy was a champion and could knock him out he just can't afford to take a chance come too far waited too long to let something untoward happen this guy Pacheco has a pretty good chin Tom he fought Romero uh, last October he was stopped by Romero after six rounds, but he never went down in that fight with Romero, who, as you know, has a booming punch, so that uh, speaks well of his chin. Plus the fact he did go the distance with Michael Carbajal, which again uh, shows you that he can take a shot pretty well. Right. He just took a shot too, Rich. He got nailed with a right hand. And Johnson, of course, in the yellow trunks, trimmed in green, hit him with the right hand, and, and going backwards uh, was probably one of the best things Pacheco was doing at the time. But even that, the force of the blow, had him stammering and going back just a little bit uh, quicker than he had anticipated. 
The thing about Johnson that has become so impressive, Tom, is his versatility. Remember when very young in his career, we thought this guy's a pretty slick boxer, and that's what he's going to be, a slick boxer. But he slowly but surely, his punch really began developing into a big-time punch, and this guy is knocking out almost everybody he fights now. It's scheduled for 10. Round one coming to a close. We'll be back. Over the year, yellow trunks trimmed in green and the red trimmed in white. Marcos Pacheco out of Sonora, Mexico. Johnson fighting out of Washington, D.C. Looking for his 25th consecutive win. Interesting your comment about he started out as basically a boxer and has become a slugger. He's got his game, Rich, I think, to the point where he can do whatever it takes to exactly. win the fight. That's, and that's the point, Tom. His versatility is such that he's going to be difficult for any opponent because he can adjust to any opponent. Whatever you've got to bring to the table, he can adjust for it. And I think um, it, the way he handles himself in the ring is dictated not only by what the guy against him uh, has in the way of being able to box and or slug, but how he feels about the fight that night, whether he wants a good workout, whether he wants to take it five or six or seven rounds, or is looking to put the guy away in a hurry. He probably doesn't want too many workouts like that Orozco workout. No. <laughs> Unbelievable <laughs> fight. It was oh. And prior to that, he had he did have a difficult fight in his career, Tom, against Alberto Raton Jimenez, who, by the way, right now is the reigning WBO champion. And that's when Mark Johnson really took everyone uh, and it got into everyone's consciousness. When he beat Raton Jimenez on a split decision and a big surprise, it was a tough fight, very close fight. And it wouldn't be a bad idea if those two got together in the ring for him and his title now. Watch Johnson's right hand. He'll hit you one, two, three times with it. He's the southpaw out there, leads with the right, banging away pretty good at it. Pacheco called bang, bang, not because he's got a great punch, but because he does throw a lot of punches. Yes, he does, and he's throwing a lot here tonight, but he's catching more. And, you know, he's one of those guys, Tom, as you mentioned, he's slipped into the opponent category. He got off to a great start in his career. He won his first 20 fights. He was excellent as a club fighter, but he was not a guy who was able to take that step up into the major league uh, competition. His level was at the top of the club level kind of guy. But when he's fought the best guys, he hasn't been able to win, with the exception of he had one win over Eric Griffin, who is a world-class fighter. <laughs> Johnson is, um, look at that right hand, unbelievably good. He tripled up with it, and he quadrupled up with that one, Tom. Yeah. How often do you see triple hooks? There was a little double hook, there's a triple, comes back with a left hand to follow him. He is holding and hitting out there, Marty Dinkin is cautioned him again. Gonna take a point away and does it again. I tell you, you're lucky you're not a radio blow-by-blow -blow guy today. Oh, boy. Punch is coming that quickly at success. You'd be tongue-tied. <laughs> Round two is coming to a close. Boy, Mark seems very fast tonight, faster than ever. Very, very quick. Round two has come and gone. And now, as you watch Sugar Ray Leonard look on, let's get a note or two. Are there. Uh, Cassandra Peterson, who's Elvira, yeah. and then Phil Hartman and I were there, and then afterward, uh, Julia Sweeney, and then there's going to be some... ...deserves more respect than he's getting, and probably it will come with the title shot. Watch. Boom, boom, boom. Bang. And then throw a left hand behind it, just for good measure. Look at that. Four in a row. Unreal speed. But Checo uh, caught them all. <laughs> And he comes out for round number three. He really does look quicker than ever tonight. Yeah. He's really showing speed. And this is a speed and quick sport. If you've got the quickness, you've got a big edge. Pacheco's um, right cheekbone beginning to swell up. He's on the move as Johnson, uh, every time he even faints at him, Pacheco jumps. Mark, we understand, has opened up a hairstyling salon, Tom, back called Two Sharp Creations. Gotta love it, gotta love it. <laughs> back in the Washington, D.C. area. He's an outstanding amateur for a long time, Mark Two Sharp Johnson. He's been a pro since 90, but before that, won so many numerous titles. He, was, he gained induction into the Washington, D.C. Boxing Hall of Fame as an amateur. Going up against the likes of... Oh, he nailed, uh, he nailed Pacheco with a left hand there that kind of slowed him down. 
Well, what a tough fighter this kid from Sonora is. His face is beginning to show the effect of a steady barrage of blows thrown by Johnson. Both cheekbones are puffing up now and swelling. I'll tell you, Pacheco's another tough customer. Pacheco trying very hard, Tom, and throwing punches back, but his punches do not carry the sting. They do not carry the cutting quality and the crispness of those thrown by Two Sharp Johnson. And he gets them in every now and then. When, when Mark allows himself to go into this type of style where he will stand in front of a fighter, Tom, and slug with them, he runs the risk of, and often does get hit in this situation, but he lands, uh, you know, three and four and five to one to that of his opponent. If he chose to be strictly a boxer, he, he might never get hit in a fight. Well, he has nailed Pacheco with some solid shots and continues a barrage against him, and Marty Dinkin looking on. Pacheco, to his credit, is fighting back, but he has really caught a ton of big-time blows thrown by Johnson. In fact, I don't know what Mark Johnson is saying to himself. What's keeping this guy up? I've hit him with some solid, solid shots. Mark, although he's undefeated against Mexican fighters, Tom, he's won 12 or 11 in a row against them. He has a very healthy respect. You know, he speaks very highly of the Mexican fighters. And by the same token, a lot of the fans uh, of the Mexican fighters, a lot of the Mexican and Mexican-American clientele that frequents the forum, they've adopted Mark Johnson. Yes. And they respect him very much. Solid right hand again by Johnson. Pacheco's caught him all. Gets nailed with the left hand as round three is coming to a close. Being a fan. With anything, Mark Johnson in that, in that round, he was landing a lot of clean, crisp blows throughout the round. In fact, it was so one-sided there, Tom, they called the doctor in to look at uh, Pacheco between rounds. It was enough for me to score that a 10-8 round for Mark Johnson. Yes, had Marty Denkin stepped in and stopped that fight, I don't think many of the fans would have objected. Johnson is, um, oh, nails Pacheco with the right hand. Now, this just is, it's becoming too one-sided, Tom. It's, yeah. uh, it's a fight I don't think they can go much longer here. Denkin is very close to stopping it. Tell you, Pacheco is about as tough as you'll see in boxing trunks, though. And only the fact that he continues to throw punches back right. is keeping Dinkin from stepping in and stopping this. Now Dinkin steps between them. The crowd loves it. Well, the fans are roaring in uh, great part due to the uh, courage of Marcus Pacheco, but he's taking a battery. I think we're seeing all of the skills of Mark Two Sharp Johnson in this uh, fight, Tom. He's just incredibly quick. He can double and triple up on his punches like uh, perhaps uh, no one else going right now. And he throws punches with power. And I'll tell you, for all of his skill and all of his ability to hit, he's in against a guy with a concrete chin. Now we told you Romero couldn't put him down. He took Carvajal the distance, took Melcher Cobb Castro the distance, Eric Griffin the distance. He beat Griffin. Pacheco out of Sonora, Mexico. Johnson has literally hit him so hard a couple of times he's lifted his feet right up off the canvas. And this kid is still banging away, ineffective to be sure, and taking an awful beating, and yet he continues to fight back. This is a kid who in his last nine fights has a record of wins, seven losses, and a tie. And it's basically the difference you're seeing between a world champion, because he is an uncrowned champion, but I think we all know he's the elite of the class right now, along with Romero, 
Marty Denkin is so close to stopping this yeah, right here. He's going to do it. He just good did. For him. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. he did it. I'm, I'm glad he did too. It was getting hard to oh, watch. Yeah, it was almost getting hard to watch, hard to talk about. It was as one-sided as a mugging. Trigger Ray congratulating him. Mark Two Sharp Johnson at his best. At his very best. And all the credit in the world as Sugar Ray looks on, of course, he's known that family a long time back east. All the credit in the world to a very tough kid, Marcos Pacheco. And at times we have been critical of Marty Dakin. I thought he was right on top of his game tonight, Rich. Stopped that fight just when he had to and when he should have. Here's the end of it now as you watch Mark Two Sharp Johnson. And this was just before Dakin stopped the fight. We'll be back right after this. Uh, well, it was a lot of things I wanted to try that I tried as far as uh, the strong uppercut. Uh, I wanted to box a little more, but he boxed me. He, he was boxing me, so uh, I'm trying to get back in the habit of boxing, but how can I box a guy who's trying to box me? But uh, it was a great win for me. I'm staying focused. Uh, I got a lot of inspiration in the locker room from uh, Mark Breeden and... Uh, Mark Breeden and uh, Frank Sugar Ray. House. What about Sugar Ray? He was here. Oh, yeah, Sugar Ray is a great idol of mine. Uh, he's from Washington, D.C., right? I'm just glad he had a chance to get out and see me. Did this guy take uh, too much of a punch for his own good? I think he did. I hit him with some good shots. But um, coming in to fight the number two and three contender, the, the, he was in great shape. He was a worthy opponent. And um, I did things that I wanted to do. I tried. Uh, I should have outboxed him more. But it was a great fight. Okay, we're going to go take a look at the end of the fight. And tell, tell us what's going on here. Uh, well, I was hitting him with a lot of good left hands and the, other, uh, the body shots. I was a little wide there. They didn't want me to fight him in the inside, so I was trying to push him off. But uh, right there, that's when I was hitting him with the good upper cup, the things I wanted to try. But um, I'd like to thank all the guys in Ham's creation and Two Shop creation of Keep Me Focused and Friendly Gym. Okay, tell us now about the possibility of a uh, world title uh, fight. Are you ready for that? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely ready. I've been ready, but um, I think my camp was more frustrated than me. Uh, all I could do is stay focused and keep winning, which I'm trying to do, and uh, stay out of harm's way. Uh, he was head butting me, but I wanted to stay out of the way. I did things that I didn't want to do. I did, but we got the win, and uh, we're on the way home. All right, well, congratulations once again. Back to ringside. Mark Two Sharp Johnson wins again, 25 in a row. His record now 26 and one. Sugar Ray, congratulations. One champ to another. We've got more.